Hi, I'm Ethan Kwan, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make my car simulator game simulation thing in Scratch. So, you might have seen it before, I uploaded it as a video on my YouTube channel, if you haven't seen that already, there's a picture of it on the screen right now. And this is how it works, so it basically, you can, so this is a brush, and you can draw a path for cars to follow, and it, um, and the cars try and follow that path. Of course, you might see some of them are way too fast and they are not getting around the bend or something like that, and that also, that is also, um, that, that represents a crash, so, uh, yeah, we don't want that. But, <laughs> anyway, so this is my car simulation game thing in Scratch. Now, this is actually, if, like, it, it's... I don't know why, it's just fun, and I've had a couple of requests to make a tutorial on this. So, that is what we're doing today. Okay, so, uh, so I have a new Scratch project up and running. Um, yes, you might notice they all follow logic, and they actually try and avoid each other. You might not notice, yeah, yeah they can, they try and avoid each other if they can. It doesn't really matter if they do hit each other, but anyway. <laughs> okay, let's get started with the tutorial. Let me just stop this. And probably close this too. Okay, let's see, we are, yep, okay. So, first of all, let's get the art tool working. Like, you, you, you need to be able to draw something onto the screen or else it doesn't really do much, right? Okay, so let's first of all delete stri Sprite 1, spri eh, Sprite 1, because we're not gonna be using the Scratch Cat today. We are going to be painting a new Sprite. I'm gonna call this one uh, Pen. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna draw a huge box. So we, so what I did there was I, t I put my mouse in the top left of this top left of this drawing corner and just dragged it to the bottom right. Uh, the mouse doesn't have the square doesn't have to be visible, and you can actually keep dragging even if it's off screen like this, and it'll still work. So make it as big as you could possibly can, and then let go. As you can see, mine is enormous. Okay. So, yeah, so now we have a really big square, and this is for, um, this is so that sprites can go off screen. You might know that Scratch prevents sprites from going off screen. So, for example, let me, let me just show you an example. Here's a blank costume with just nothing in it. Uh, let's try and set its X to something like 260. That'll make it go off to the left, and as you can see, it is limited to 240 because Scratch doesn't want sprites to go off screen. Now, if, if we instead of use this costume one, uh, let me just hide it because it's getting annoying, but <laughs> because you can't really see it, but let's try and change its X to 260 again. And as you can see now, it stays there. And that's because as you can see, the sprite still has quite a ways to go until it's off the screen. So that's until like here, which is almost a hundred, uh, uh, that's pretty much a thousand, right? So it can go off, yeah, so as you can see, it has passed a thousand in the X, and it can go to one, like, a, a negative a thousand as well. Oops. Um, so that's why this is really useful. This is one of those scratch tricks if you, uh, if, if you want sprites to go off screen, but you, you don't want to see them, and if they're, like, pen, this is, this is one way to make them go off screen. Uh, okay. I enough rambling, I will get get on with the tutorial. So, costume name, we're just gonna call this big, in all, um, it just, just big. Maybe I can put it in all caps. Uh, big, like that. Okay. Now we have a really big costume named appropriately big. And, okay, so let's go to the code. Okay. So, first thing we want to do is we want to hide this sprite because we don't want to see. Oh, uh, the mic was kind of tilted. Um, we don't want to see this sprite. Uh, on the screen, right? We don't want to see this giant purple box here because that'll get annoying really quickly. So, uh, because you can't, <laughs> you can't really see anything on the bottom. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna, we're just gonna drive a one green flag clicked and a hide block like that. Okay, so after we hid the sprite, so we can just test that. Yeah, okay, so it's hidden right now. And okay, so now let's make it go to zero, zero. So just go to X, Y, and zero, and zero. Okay, so now as you can see, this will go to zero, zero. Yeah, okay. So as you can see now, this will go to zero, zero. Every time we click the green flag, even if we set its X to like 100, it will go to zero, zero. Cool, okay. So now let's draw a green background 
for our uh, for our background because that's kind of the point. Okay, so um, let's just so first of all, we're gonna need to import the pen extension. This might not surprise you because we are going to have to be drawing to the screen. Uh, so pen just. What I did there is click this little button in the bottom right and bottom bottom left and clicked pen right here. And okay, so now we have a bunch of pen blocks to work with and first of all, let's go ahead and create a new block. We're gonna call this block uh, setup. Uh, let's, no, let's call it reset. So reset like that and run without screen refresh and click OK. So uh, and make sure to drag reset right underneath our go to X, Y. Okay, so what we're going to do is, first of all, at the very beginning, we're going to erase all, and then we're going to go ahead and set our pen color to, and let's just set it to some kind of nice green color. Uh, I prefer, like, dark green, because that's the color of grass, kind of. Um, you can pick whatever you like. I, I would just recommend starting with green and then changing the color later on. Okay, so now we have our set pen color to something. And at the beginning, let's just make sure we are not drawing to the screen, just to put a pen up at the very top of our reset block. Okay, and then at the very bottom, let's set our pen size to 1000. This will make the pen size really big, and this will probably just cover our whole screen, that's how you get a background. Okay, so when we set the pen size to 1000, we're just gonna go ahead and pen down, and then pen up. This will just draw a huge dot to the screen, and it'll just look a back uh, like that. It'll just look like a background. Okay, so let's try out the project, and yes, so now we have a green background. Now that's a bit too bright for me, so let's try that again, and okay. Okay, um, okay, uh, let's now work on the drawing tool. So, uh, after reset, what we're going to do is drag a forever loop, and inside this forever loop, we're going to go ahead and uh, at the very top, we're going to put pen up. So make sure if we're just moving the mouse, uh, we're just gonna put the pen off the sc off off the paper and just let it move wherever it wants. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to grab a repeat until. So we're gonna repeat until mouse down, and inside this repeat we're gonna go ahead and go to, and you guessed it, mouse pointer. So we're gonna repeat until mouse down, go to mouse pointer, and drag this underneath our pen up inside the forever loop. And now, as you can see, if you check out, take, check out, uh, check out the coordinates at the bottom uh, on the side of my screen there, as you can see, it is following my mouse. Uh, of course, you can't really see it right now because it's invisible, but you get the point. It's following our mouse now. Okay, so now we are repeating until mouse is down. Now, what happens if we click the mouse? Well, it should stop following, and yes, it does. So, and then once I let go, it should start following our mouse again. Okay. So repeat until mouse down, go to mouse pointer. So what are we going to do now? Well, we're going to repeat until, um, we're going to repeat until not mouse down. Pretty simple. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and repeat until, grab a knot, and then duplicate this mouse down up here into here. So we're going to repeat until not mouse down. And for now, let's just go ahead and uh, let's just at the very top here, let's set our pen color to that gray color. So there's going to be the road. So before the repeat until, set our pen color to gray or whatever color you like. This is going to be the road. And then we're going to go ahead and um, we're going to go ahead and pen down right here. And we are going to be continuing to going to the mouse pointer. So now, as you can see, once we put our pen down, oh, dead, well, this means that we, um, we forgot to set the pen size. So... Um, my bad, so grab a pet set pen size 2, and let's just say 60 for now. So stick this uh, anywhere between this, um, between this gap here, between the repeat until's. And now this should work. Yes, so now we have a nice little drawing tool, and uh, I know some of you wanted this drawing tool. Um, it's pretty simple to make, and it's, um, it's not too hard to change around. So for example, if you want a small pen size, you could just change this number to like 20 or something, and then we are, have a smaller pen size. Okay. Um, now, what we're going to do is, well, sorry if you can hear that, that's the, that's the road outside. Um, okay. So uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to make a way to change our pen size. So how do we do that? Well, 
in my other simulation, I made it with the scroll of the mouse wheel. So how do you detect a scroll of the mouse wheel on Scratch? Because there is no uh, scroll up or scroll down in here, and there's no, um, there's no when scrolled in this events category. Now, did you know that this when space key pressed, well, well, when up arrow key pressed, did you know that this triggers even if you scroll down? So watch this. So this should light up? Uh, no, it doesn't. And I just stick something in there like this. And yes, so as you can see, I'm not pressing the up arrow. Uh, I'm scrolling actually down. So I'm like moving my, my fingers down and it's scrolling up. So this means go up the screen or make everything go down or pretend like we're going up the screen. So that's why it's up arrow, but yeah. So yeah, so as you can see, I'm scrolling and it lights up yellow. So this is one way to detect the up arrow. Now, the only problem with this is if you actually press the real up arrow, it will also light up. Now we don't want that. So how do you fix that? Well, it's pretty simple. What we're gonna do is drag an if and if, uh, if key, up arrow pressed, up arrow pressed, then uh, stop, stop this script. Now this should prevent any up arrow presses, but allow scrolling. Okay, so now let's go ahead and create a new variable because we want to store the size of the mouse in here. So first of all, delete the my variable, we don't need the my variable, and we're going to create a new variable called brush size. For, for all sprites is fine, and click OK. Okay, and at the very beginning, inside of Reset, at, at the very bottom of Reset, we're just gonna set brush size to 60. And inside our forever loop, we're just gonna go ahead and set pen size to brush size. Okay, so let's just see what that looks like, and as you can see, it is our brush size, we can draw it with 60, and then if we change this to a slider, we can change the size of the brush, as you can see. Now, this is actually pretty simple to impl implement. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and at, and at this bo at the bottom of this key up arrow press script, we're just gonna change brush size by negative one. Now, why is it negative one? If it's up arrow, well, it's uh, it's just based on the mouse controls. So since I'm scrolling down with my fingers to make it to have the up arrow key pressed, uh, it should go down once I scroll down. Now, as you can see. I don't want the brush size to go negative because that's going to be weird. So what we're going to do is we're going to surround our uh, change brush size by a negative one in an if and make sure that our brush size is greater than, we're going to make sure our brush size is greater than uh, one. Uh, let's, no, let's make sure the brush size is greater than uh, nine. So that'll be may 10 or above is fine because we don't want people to draw like a really thin road because then our cars won't be able to travel on it, right? Okay, so now this should be limited to nine. Okay, great. So now I can draw with a brush of nine. Now, the next thing I want to implement is scrolling up to make the brush size go up. Now, that this is pretty simple. All we're gonna do is duplicate our when key up arrow pressed script and change this to a key down arrow pressed and inside the if, make sure to change this also to a key down arrow pressed. And now this bottom if condition, what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna replace this greater than for a less than and make sure our brush size is less than, let's say 120. So that'll be twice the size of our initial brush. Now that'll be really big, um, but yeah, that's fine. Okay, if brush size is less, less than 120, we're gonna change brush size by one. Okay, and for now, I, I don't want a brush size of 9 because it's so close to 10, and I really want it to be 10, and it won't really make a difference, so brush size greater than 10, but really, you can set these values to whatever you want, as long as this one here is uh, greater than 0, so make sure this doesn't go negative, because that, that'll mess everything up, so just keep it positive, and yeah. Okay. So let's see what we have created. We have we have a brush size of 60, and if we scroll down, as you can see, we have a smaller brush size. And if we scroll up all the way, we have a bigger one, and the max is 120, and that's a really big brush. Okay, so I can just I can just paint in the whole thing with this. <laughs> there we go. Okay, 
So, okay, so now we have a way to control the brush size. Now, I really want to be able to see the brush on here because right now you can't really see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a dot down somewhere on the screen like that, and then I'm going to stop the, stop the project. Now we have a size for how big our uh, painter should be. So let's create a new sprite. We're going to call it Painter. And this won't really do anything. This will just follow our mouse. So, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in, and we're going to draw a circle with no outline. And we can make it uh, gray, like this. Okay. And now what you have to do is you have to see where this circle is. As you can see, it's right here. I'm dragging it around with my mouse on the screen. And what we're going to do is we're going to position it right at the middle of one of these other circles, the ones we drew. Okay, so that's pretty close, but it's a bit smaller. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold down the Option key. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's Alt on... Um, I, I'm pretty sure it's Alt on the... Uh, on PCs and like, um, not PCs, on Windows computers, but I'm not sure. So if you, yeah. So if you hold down Alt while dragging, uh, right now it'll just size from a corner. If you hold Alt, you might notice that it actually sizes from the center, which is actually really nice. So uh, let, we just have to make sure that it's about the right size. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, mine is about 63 by 63 pixels, which is actually probably a bit over. So what we're going to do is we're going to shrink it down a little bit, again holding ALT until it's about 60 by 60. Now 60 by 60 is not a coincidence because the brush size is 60 and we're measuring in pixels. So the fact that it's near 60 is not a coincidence. Okay, I'm going to make it a bit bigger so that we can actually kind of see it. Um, so it's overlapping a bit. And yeah. Okay, so, so now we have our painter sprite. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and drag a when reflect like click. So go to the code tab, drag a when reflect like click, and grab a forever loop. And inside this forever loop, all we're going to do is go to mouse pointer. Now, this will actually kind of get annoying because we can't really see the background behind this, right? So what we're going to do, see, this is going to be this is going to be annoying. So what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and inside here, inside looks, we're gonna switch, uh, no, sorry. We're gonna set our ghost effect to uh, 60. So this will make it um, slightly transparent. Now, this time the 60 is a coincidence. This is, that, that's just, that's a, that's a random coincidence. But as you can see, it's dark uh, like this and it's kind of transparent. Now I'm gonna make my, my circle a bit smaller. Now this will require some tweaking. Mine is about 61 by 61. Um, and make sure, guys, make sure to drag around the sprite to center it before, uh, you, before you try out the, the forever loop. If, if your, if your circle is out of position with the circles it's drawing, make sure it's in, in the, the sprite here. The sprite, make sure it's centered. That's very important, so don't forget that. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue with this project. We are already at 18 minutes, and we haven't even gotten the cars yet. We might split this up into two videos. Um, yeah. We are drinking water because we guys water making us. Let's go grab drink water balloon, guys. And, you know, yeah, stay hydrated. Okay, so, um, so now we have a painting sprite, and that's good. But now we have to just make sure we are not out in this view, because this will drag around our sprite instead of, uh instead of moving it on the screen, and the transparency effect will be gone. So make sure you're in full screen while testing this. Uh, okay, one more thing to add. My circle here doesn't change with the brush size, so the next thing we have to do is make, make that happen. Okay, so we know that the original sprite is 100%, right? This is, this is set size to 100%, and that'll, that won't change anything. But we want it to change with the brush size. So what we're going to do is... Right now, the brush size is some range between 0 and 60, but we want the range to be between 0 and 100, right? Because we want we want 100 to correlate to 60, and 60 brush size to correlate to 100, and 0 brush size to correlate to, well, 0%, right? So how do we do that? Well, it's actually not too difficult. So we're going to take our current brush size, and we're going to grab a division, and we're going to stick our brush size onto the left, and we're going to divide this brush size by 60. 
Now this will give us a number between 0 and 1. Now, if we just quickly test this, so we're just going to go ahead and grab a save block. Uh, this is how you debug in Scratch, by the way, you use save blocks. Um, I'm going to stick that in the forever loop, and we're just going to say the brush size divided by 60. So this right now is 1, because 60 divided by 60 is 1, but once we shrink it, as you can see, it's always a number between 0 and 1, unless you go above 60, then it's, well, any number. Uh, right now it's 2 because this is twice the size. Okay, uh, so this is good, now we know how big our circle should be. So all we have to do now is we have to multiply this by our uh, our current size, which is 100%. So multiply that by 100, and as you can see, if we stick that in the save block again, this will show us what size to put it at. So if we go down, as you can see, it's right now 16.67, which is 10, which is correct. And it'll go up all the way to 100, 200, which is um, twice the size. So that is correct. So what we're going to do is now we're going to stick this set size to 100 in there and re get rid of the save block. So uh, keep the set size to 100, um, keep the set size to brush the by 60 times 100 in there. And now you might notice that our brush changes with how big the, um, the, uh, actual brushes so this is good because now we have now we have a good indicator of what um, what kind of brush we uh, what, what size brush are we using okay one more thing I want to be able to erase this stuff because this is um, uh, we might maybe make mistakes while we're drawing our cars and we don't really want that so we can so I want a way to be able to undo those mistakes okay and so, what we're going to do is, inside here, we're just going to create a new variable, and we're going to call it, um, brush type. And we're going to keep that for all sprites, and yeah, okay. Uh, we're going to go ahead and set brush type at the very beginning, underneath reset, we're going to set that to zero, and zero is going to mean our, uh, our road drawing. Okay. Um... So what we're going to do is inside here, we have the set pen color too, so detach underneath that, and then what we're going to do is drag an if then else, and let's go ahead and grab the equals and check if brush type is equal to zero, then we're going to set the pen color to this uh, gray black color, I guess. And if it's one, well, we're going to just set it to the grass, co gra ah, grass color, um, which, it, which should be fine. So. We're gonna stick that inside the else, and let's see how that looks. Okay, uh, we don't have a way of changing the brush type right now, so let's just set it to a slider. So right now it's a brush type of zero, but if we change it to a one, like that, as you can see, now it's an eraser. So that's good, and this will be able to make fine adjustments, which is also a plus. Okay, uh, so now let's make the brush type not slider based, but um, but keyboard based. So I just want the space bar to trigger a, uh, a different brush type. So what we're going to do is drag a when space key pressed, uh, and we're just going to go ahead and change, uh, set, set brush type, set brush type to brush type plus one. Now this will make it go off to infinity. Uh, if I, if I just show it, um, brush type, as you can see if I press space, it goes up. And it's not, it's not too quick, but it's pretty quick, so that's fine. Okay, set brush type to brush type plus one. Now, here's, the, here's the magic part. Uh, there's a block in here called mod, or modulo, if you, if you prefer. So this will round, this will divide, so this will uh, divide a number by another number. So if you divide, let's say, let's right now it's 49, so 49 divided by 2. Now this will give you the remainder. So 49 divided by 2 is 48 divided by 2, plus 1 divided by 2, and 1 divided by 2, the remainder is 1. So this, so if we stick 49 in here, and if we stick 2 in there, as you, you should see, it gives you 1. So that's going to be the remainder of 49 mod 2. So 49 divided by 2, remainder is 1. This will, this will give you the remainder. Now, the cool thing about this is, is this, this block right here will loop every however many, 
uh, what what number you put here. So if you put this as 10 and stick a brush uh, brush type in here uh, and stick this right inside, uh, get rid of get rid of this and then just stick this plus one inside the left and stick that back into brush type. You might notice that if we press space, it goes to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then it will loop back to 0. So this is actually a really useful block if you want to create animations or really anything that loops. And this is perfect for our situation because we want our brush to loop <laughs> uh, We want our brush to loop back between 0 and 1. So we just gonna we just want to put a mod 2 in there and let's just see how that looks. So if we press space, it goes to 1 and then 0 1 0 1 0. Perfect. Now, the only thing is if you hold space, it goes between 1 and 0. So I don't I don't really want that. So all we're going to do is drag uh, uh, drag a wait until and we're just going to wait until not key space press. Now you have to let go before it changes again. So right now I'm holding it doesn't work unless I let go and then press it again. Okay, so now I should be able to draw and then erase with the space key. Now, uh, I really want a visual indicator of this. <laughs> so what I want is get rid of, hide the brush type, go to the painter, and we're gonna create a new sprite, uh, new costume, sorry. And we're gonna paint this one the color of the background. So we're just gonna grab the eyedropper tool. So duplicate the costume and then grab the eyedropper tool and then eye drop. Um, I drop, uh, you can't really I drop the stage, can you? Okay. So all we're gonna have to do is we're just gonna have to kind of guess, uh, the color. Sorry. Um, so this is gonna be what, like, should be like this-ish? That looks pretty good. Yeah. Okay. And we're just gonna fill it with that color. That's actually really close. I'm just gonna change it a bit darker and... Oh, too dark, too dark, too dark. Yeah, you just have to fiddle around with this. It's gonna be kind of annoying, but sorry about that. Eh, okay, that's good enough, okay. So what we want now is, we're just gonna go ahead and switch costume to, so inside the forever loop, we're gonna switch costume to uh, brush type plus one. Now, why is it plus one? Well, we know that brush type ranges from zero to one, and our costumes range from one to two, so if we just add one, that should be fine. So now, let's see what that looks like. So right now, it's original brush, and if we press space, as you can see, it changes color to green. So that's, I think that's really nice. Okay, we are 20, we are, we are half an hour in, and we haven't even gotten a car in yet. Okay, I'm so sorry, but I'm gonna have to end this video here. Uh, we haven't even gotten that many scripts in here, honestly. We just got, we just got a whole bunch of, like, um, drawing tool. Okay, have fun with your drawing tool, guys. This is gonna be really, this is gonna be, oh, the comments are gonna hate me for this. Um... Uh, yeah, so, sorry about that, I will upload the next one, probably tomorrow, or today, uh, you know what, I'll just upload it today. Uh, okay, so, thank you for watching, I hope you liked this video, if you did, please subscribe, like, and, and, uh, subscribe, I think I already said that. Okay, thank you for watching, and stick around for part two of the series where we actually put the cars in. We might have to go with part three, I don't know. Anyway, see you on how to do, how to do so and see you next time.